All right, let's move into uh, some of our topics. 365. Uh, topic number one tonight on It's Happening Out is the election. In five days, what is being called the election of a lifetime is going to take place on Tuesday. Right before we say anything at all, regardless of what you feel, who you support, on behalf of everyone on this panel at It's Happening Out, we want you to get out and vote on Tuesday. Get out and vote, yes. uh, regardless of what you want. And you don't need to wait till Tuesday. There are plenty of early voting locations. Exactly. There's exactly. no excuse. Yes. No excuse. Uh, the old joke, vote early, vote often. Uh, exactly. All right. The thing that's interesting about what's happening on Tuesday is we have heard about 50 million words in every place on planet <laughs> Earth about this election on Tuesday, the midterms. Interestingly enough, in the battles that have taken place over the last six, seven months, we are still in the exact same place that where we started. We are 50-50. My question is, how is it possible we are still in the same place with just our election five days from now? How is that possible? I, I mean, we need to get real, honestly. Like, the fact that it, we shouldn't be surprised that we're 50-50. We really shouldn't. This whole country was built by slave labor and sexism on stolen land. Plain and simple. So why are we surprised today that we've still got this 50-50 split on bigotry and, you know, discrimination, racism, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's the same old, same old for America, really. Are you saying that 50% of this country is our bigots? Not necessarily, no. But I am but saying that, that it's that's not surprising said. that we're divide, that we're so divided because this country is built on ideals that come down to bigotry and racism. Absolutely. So, so okay, but, one, one but that was 200 years ago. Yeah, but was okay. it though? Yes, it was. I mean, was. it was 200 years ago, but we've still got a lot more of the same still today that uh, is taking an awful long time to evolve. Do you think that's what's dividing us? Because I don't. Well, what, I it, what is it that's dividing yeah, Absolutely. I, okay. I don't. All right, you make your point. What is it that's dividing us? I think there's a lot of tribalism uh, that's dividing us in, in social voting on social, uh, on maybe social issues versus uh, foundational issues in terms of budgets and security and what do you mean by social issues? Because social issues are political issues. Well, they they aren't. It depends on what your priorities are. You know, if 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 being gay and or gay issues are your number one priority, then you're going to vote there. But if you if you want a small government or physical conservancy or a strong military, then what are you going to vote for? What's first or second thing, on your That's list? That's why we say the personal is political. It's not about being gay being your, your priority of your life. It's about you know your rights being a priority of your life, what you're, how you're allowed to live your life or not. That's the personal is political. That's, that's, there's no, no truer statement but, when it comes but to But there, there are people that have struggled with that more so in their lifetime, such as yourself, who is a trans activist that has to really deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. That might not be something that Joe or others have had to deal with on a regular basis. Right. Well, and that's kind of part of the problem when it comes to politics in general is that we, uh, a lot of people in our country don't think outside of themselves. They don't think about what other groups might be going through, might have to go through right. as a result why, of why, why is it that Why is it that a lot of people feel that if it doesn't affect them, it just isn't doesn't important, matter. period. Mm -hmm. It doesn't affect them, it doesn't affect anybody. Uh, you know, I think the fact that we're still divided over issues that right now in, our, um, in this place and time are not even so much political or left and right, I really think it's a lot of right and wrong and I don't I mean basic right and wrong mm -hmm. and you know I really think that people should vote their conscience and not necessarily their party because in this day and age you know parties are all flip-flopped the Republican Party of today is not the same Republican Party that even I respected years ago so I think that at you know the things that we're seeing today in our lifetime and in this in, in our in our country right now i think people really need to vote their conscience you know you make an interesting point and i've said this before and it always shocks people al is a registered republican mm -hmm. i am i've been a registered Good republican shot, since 1992 but what i did in the early 90s to your point i do not even recognize the republican party today 
I couldn't vote in in ninety eight percent of no disrespect, Joe. We're really glad you're nope. here. But I couldn't vote for ninety eight percent of the people that represent the Republican Party because it's been commandeered into a radical from my standpoint, and many people argue from the Democratic side that it's also extremely radical. And all of us that are trying to find a middle, we can't seem to find a place. And and that, I think, is the point of this conversation. Five days away and we're still 50-50. We're either voting or siding with our tribe, yep. or we can't find the middle ground of going, what is reasonable? Right. And and well, I was going to say, I don't think that we can necessarily, like you said, it's about right versus wrong. And that doesn't mean right versus left. The Democratic Party is not right about everything. I, you know, I, I myself am non-party affiliated, um, which is frustrating when it comes to primaries in Florida. Because then I you have to, no say at all. Well, no, that's not true. In a primary. A, because I, a, because I register um, for one or the other during the primary and then register PAC or unregister, you should, I should say, um, afterwards. So, but the point being that I look at the, Dem the Democratic candidates as an example for the congressional um, seat in my district this year. I would rather choose the third party because her um, politics, her morals align with mine. But at the same time, I feel like I'm up against the Republican candidate who is so radical um, and so much worse than the Democratic one. And I feel like I'm not going to be able to uh, prevent some really awful things from happening you, if I don't You make a really it. interesting point that I put out in front of you. There's a lot of people that are saying that we are so close in our election on Tuesday, the 50-50 philosophy, that your point is really what is going to swing the election. Right. The libertarians that are in many, many, especially of the congressional ra uh, races and some of the Senate races, will only capture maybe 2% of the vote. Right. But the 2% of the vote will end the Democratic chance of that right. candidate in the race because they pulled the two percent away what do you think about that it's frustrating as hell <laughs> well that's your point that you've just made yeah because i would rather i i can't vote my conscience as power said because otherwise then i'm sabotaging essentially essentially a better candidate well, well what do you what do you i'm sorry go ahead speaking on voting your conscience do you all even I, I know i don't believe that everyone should have the right to vote i know that that's part of democracy that everyone should be given the right to vote when they turn 18 because then that's when they get intelligent but does everyone at this table even believe every person deserves the right to vote if, if you're a u.s citizen yes you have the right to vote yeah, because of the law in Not fact, I think that uh, Amendment 4, by the way, uh, vote yes to restore voting rights for felons mm -hmm. who have served their time, especially. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah absolutely. I believe everybody Amendment has the right 4 to vote. is an amendment, a constitutional ballot amendment in the state of Florida to allow uh, convicted felons to be restored the right to vote. Right. What you're Once they've about. served their time, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let me ask you one other thing related to the election of a lifetime on Tuesday. What do you think about, you, you make a terrific point about the libertarian 2% that siphons off votes. We're a gay talk show. We're the most popular live gay talk show in America. How does it land on you when I say in 2016, when arguably we were in the most important election of our lifetime, and then that 54% of gay America did not vote at all? What do you think about that? Well, that, that gets me very angry. I mean, we could tell in 2016 how important the election was. And for gay America, 54%, to sit on their ass and say, well, girl, I'm too fab to get involved. I bet they don't think they're too fab now. You know, those same people that thought, oh, well, Hillary has it, or I just can't be bothered. I bet they don't think they can't be bothered now, you know. Which is why I said on last week's show, you know, for, and I directed this toward trans, but this really goes toward our, our whole community. You know, don't sit there and allow others to fight for you because we are, you are literally voting for your life. You're literally voting for your life. So you need to get up off the sidelines and actually get in the fight. Vote for your rights, vote for your, your stand, Vote for your voice. That's your power. I'm, I'm, I completely agree with that. I, Joe, I want to I want to turn to you to the exact point in terms of your observation. It might be a little bit different, but it, it, it is a bit different. But 
there is a whole segment that is kind of the the untold voter segment out there that have an opinion and voted Republican or, or whatever, but they won't discuss it. And the reason they won't discuss it is because when they open their mouth, they're immediately, you know, criticized or shouted down. Shouted down. And it's like, okay, I can't have that opinion. Well, so they stay silent. So there I think in twenty sixteen there was a lot of silent majority. Because people were like, you know what, I'm not going to get in this fray. I'm going to vote what's important to me. I'm not going to get in the fray. I'll not talk about it with you and, and go forward. Well, so I, you know, I'll just I, save I, it just for Facebook. This. I would just like to say really quick, I don't, I don't agree with those that, that vote Republican. That's true. However, I would, so, I would much rather you take a stand on something then sit your ass down and take a stand on nothing. I, so I for agree, those, I agree. So I do At least you voted, right? I, I, yes. At so least even, you vote. Even if you're, even if you're a, even if you're silent, you don't have any obligation to go around espousing your views, but vote. Absolutely. And so I don't have any problem with those that were silent. I mean, uh, aside from I wish they would have vote my way, but you know, I don't have a problem <laughs> with those that were silent. I have a problem with those that, like you said, the 54% that didn't do shit. I will know? tell you a brief story. My mother taught government for 30 years <clears throat> to seniors in high school. If you turned 18 during your senior year in high school and you did not register to vote, she would not pass you. Nice. Oh, and, wow. and her, oh, I love and, your mother. And her perspective, now we all grew up Democrats, but that was kind of the blue Democrats. But as she taught government, it was like, no, don't believe anybody. If you're gonna have a stand, own your stand. Right, exactly. Own what you believe and go for the person who believes in the same things that you believe. Right. But own it, don't follow blindly. Yeah. Well, and so much of these past few elections is people are just blindly following. On both sides. On both, on both right. sides, on both sides. Well, I, I, in, in summary, in our conversation about why we're 50-50, uh, we echo how we start this segment. Uh, Tuesday is really important to you, regardless of which tribe you live in, yes. which minority you live in, which majority you live in, it's really, really important. And, and I think we all unanimously agree, there's various opinions on this panel, but the one thing that we agree about is get out and vote, vote yes, exactly. on Tuesday. Yes. That's the most important thing to do. He's All right. arguably much more important even than the presidential. Yeah, I, I agree.